says, and this shall be the oath, the sign, the demarcation, the indication, what shall solidify the bond of the house of Israel. This shall be my oath, my sign, my insignance with you, nation, that I will grant unto you the Shabbat, that you may have the Shabbaton. And so we got this twisted, and it's all a theology. It has come from the minds of convoluted, twisted men of such corruption, vileness, they are beyond approach and reproach. And so they have conspired in their ignorance to lay aside the Shabbat, to keep the first day Sunday, and, and what's so horrific is that those that say it is the lunar Shabbats, and they are packed damnable lunatics you as well and so they generate these theses unto the unlearned and ignorant it sounds well and they buy it hook line and sink so you got this corrupt mentality today telling you you don't have to regard the Shabbat and you don't only his nation, his arm, wrap up His great nation. What is the composition of that nation, the mindset? They shall honor the Shabbat. And the Mo'adam, the great feast days. It is amazing that I use the words for me, wordologists, no fancy expression. I'm a student of word simplicity. I don't understand words. I want to define them and see what Torah says about the word. I'm constantly doing that. I'm not the brightest among us. I was talking to this little child and she was showing me some things in sign language. She said, do you know how to do that? I said, no, little girl, but that's all right. You learn. You will be smart. You will have something that Riach will never have. We're silly. So I'm excited about you learning and you apprehending. That makes me feel nice. So if I never understand that, that's all right. As long as you. I want to understand the simple things of life. Words are descriptions. And he gives us a descriptive image of all things. I said to her that she's always asking me, did Ach Mikhaya write? Did they get snow? I said that Ach Mikhaya, they got about 6, 12 inches of snow. It's very cold. And so she says to me, Papi, I would love for us to get 50 feet of snow. I say, no, little girl, that's... I say, let us inquire of Yah, his pleasure, that maybe he gives us three inches. She said, no, I want a million inches. I said, let's not request that of the Most High. She comprehend the sign language. But to understand the dynamics of words, she doesn't have that ability. 
and neither do we as a nation, as a whole. We know everything, but we know nothing. We're bright, and we're the brightest among each other, and we want to show everyone our brightness. But it has no character. And the reason it has no character, because the characteristics of our lives are far from what we as a nation speak. And so it is emboldened by the false security and pretense of others that gather in our social circle to embolden us, to make us think that we have it, what we believe we have. I'm the dumbest among us. This child will know more things than I will ever know. All the children. It's not what one knows. It's how they utilize and dispense the knowledge of what they have learned. We are a nation of people that's far from that. We talk a great game. There's no substance in it at all. None. I began a message this morning. It's probably going to take me some time to teach it. I want to finish this today. Our Zachin will come next year about on the great nation of Yang. And if I ask us, do we understand what judgment is? We all have concluded that we do know. Just like we conclude what love is. And compassion. And caring. But we just don't know. We know how to be angry. We know how to be mean as hell. We know how to corrupt ourselves. We know how to stand in our adamant ways. But there is no change of heart. But to do right as a nation, we don't know how to. Because we have not learned how to love him. And because we have not learned how to love him, we frankly don't give a damn about one another. It makes no difference whether you buy what I say or not. You will buy folly and gossip, and frivolous conversations. I'm going to teach on the purpose of judgment. with about 30 pages of scripture that deals with one aspect, the derivatives of judgment or mishpat. If I had time like some of these false delusional men, they call themselves preachers, I know what time in studying will do. I don't have that kind of time. I got a festy season ahead of me. I'm hoping I can get out at least 3,000 ceilings started tomorrow. And so what I will do, I will do four or five trays, judge my time on each tray, and that will give me the precise calculation as to how long it will take. To get it done. And if we as a nation begun to calculate and deal with our own ru'ah, we'll get done what he commands us. I have no sorrow for this wicked generation. Let me tell you this and I'm going to teach. 
There was a sister and a chut that contacted me years ago. Her voice and her speech enunciation was very precise. So she called me one day and said, Riak, she gave me her name. Do you remember me? I said, well, that's somewhat difficult to answer. And the more I listen, as Luke says, the more I look, I recognize you. And so the more I listened to her voice, I remembered her precisely. The time she called, it was during the summertime. And she began to listen. They found the network. And as she began to explain to me the great agony and afflicted trial she's in, I noticed one thing about her. Her voice was very strong. It was very precise, poignant, the volume. And the thing that impressed me more, it was this ability and knowledge. I knew that the woman had a Torah. I could tell in her speech how she said it. She was not trying to instruct me. She says to me, when we found you, it was a breath of fresh water. And we listened. And although there are times that I have to be careful because of my environment, Because of my circumstance, I am somewhat prohibit, but I listen with my children. We hear. I have longed to come and visit. I have been hindered. I'm not permitted. And so as I listen to the agony of her heart, the great pain, you could sense it. But through all of that, I did not sense a weakness of doubt. She was resolved in her stance. She was firm in her commitment. And her resolution was solidified in her ability to be able to reach someone that could assist in the smallest of ways. She has been on my thought, my heart. And so she wrote me a letter today. And she sent a tremendous offering, although her circumstance doesn't permit her to do that. And she says, Riak, I will continue to sow into this because I know. She knows what she's getting. And although her circumstance and situation doesn't permit her to do that, and those that are listening that are wicked as they come, I don't take anything back. They don't give a damn. They're extortioners and greedy swines. They're not of the house of Yisraya. They give everything to Mr. Martin, Marx, Mr. Pennies. I don't, we're not beggars. It's just that there are those of their circumstance. This woman, this daughter of Sihon, never complained. She didn't speak with bitterness. And I knew it was real. You don't find people like that. We are bitter people. 
And even those that opposed her, she did not speak in a fashion to even belittle them. And we as a nation do just the opposite. Because we are not a great nation. I will show us why we're not a great nation. Yah says, I shall make of Abraham. He uses the words, Am, nation. That has been birthed by my bosom. Am, Rab, Rav, Atta. Great nation within the nation. There shall be a nation within the nation of Yisrael. That he calls a select remnant or a bochir. A people that's been elected. Chosen. Inspired by the living Torah, the witness of that power. As the old Gerushim would sing, he is real. Yes, he is real. All in my nefesh, in my being, my substance, in all of the ignorance. They held on to tenets of truth. Although the enemy tried to present a delusion, they were elected before they were formed in the belly of the womb. So that is prayers. Mama's prayers. Your prayers didn't mean a damn thing. You knew them before they were formed in the bedroom. And when they shemach, when they hear the truth, they will obey it. We just don't operate like that, do we? So we the true remnant of the house. We get upset at one that deals with our nature. I said to a young man that called me this morning because I said to him, no, you go back to the site, you listen, you read, and then you make the decision. Fair, humble young man, beautiful Ru'ah, I told him to listen today. He said, Riyak, I've made the decision by your instruction. And I know it's right for me to do. And I said to him, young man, can I say something to you? It is our nature to examine others. I said, if we would examine ourselves that way, and I use the analogy of a man and a woman overweight. I say a man will look at himself, he will look at someone that's a little larger than him, and he will say, I'm not that big. Same thing with a woman. I don't look like that. We are so wickedly hypocritical. And so a man will see another man, he says, I look better than him. Well, I, I, I don't look like him. Same thing with a woman. I said, my young friend, if you think that if they would assess themselves to say, I don't want to look like that, I said, there's nothing that they cannot do, but we don't assess ourselves that way. I said, and they will never accomplish anything. So instead of you examining me, you examine your hearts. Listen to this man. Listen to what comes off of our channel. You will find out. That's the way we are. I don't ever want it to be that everyone is wrong and I am right. 
There is no right. I do nothing right. My love is wrong. My love for my issue is wrong. My compassion, my fellowship is wrong. The only ability I have to hide myself in Hamashiach, do the power that I can do, do as I can fashion my mind, I can fashion my ways accordingly, not to what I perceive is right, what Torah commands me as a man to do. What Torah commands me to do as a friend, as an ach, as an achutz, unto them. We don't do that. We can say what we want to. It is just a fact. Can I prove it out? We greet you all under that tremendous as man would call it a vortex that's coming from the Antarctic with temperatures that are plummeting to levels that many in cities have not experienced. You that are in the northeastern part of these wicked states, Midwest, that northern crossing that parameter whereby the vortex is overwhelming the people. Yes, you too, my friend, Achmikaya, there in Cincinnati. That the weather is a tremendous agony upon the people. It keeps them shut inside. They can't run to Walmart, Dollar Mart, Kmart. Send all of that that you would have spent in Walmart, sent it, here, sent it here, all right? And temperatures that are so life-threatening that if your skin is exposed for minutes, you will get frostbitten. Don't you know there are fools still braving that? We bless Yah that he grants you warmth in your homes. I've had to stoke the old stokey up pretty stoke firing. Don't have the kind of insulation and all of that. When I arose this morning around a quarter to six when I got up, it was 22 then. When I left the house, it was 33, and that is quite chilly for us here. It's going to get colder by Tuesday. And so we brought you for all things, and may he strengthen your home today. And let the warmth of Torah cause your heart to delight greatly. Let the substance fill your belly. As in the days that our mothers, you that are a little age, and they would prepare meals in this type of the weather to warm your bellies. Nice soup that was hearty, a piece of cornbread. It was a home meal. In some cases, sure, there was a little slice of fat back or streaky meat. We were not fortunate to have chicken or steak with that. We that were young got the soup and cornbread. The older ones got the fat back. I'm somewhat glad of that. Mm -hmm. I want to close. I don't know if it's going to be climactic. But with the teaching today on the great nation. The Am Rab Akta. The great nation within the nation as a nation of people within the scattered remnant throughout the earth. And also the nation that's within the nation of Yisrael. And Torah talks about the 144,000 men. And having the strength of Torah, having the physicality to bear 
and protector that shall arise out of every shabet, every tribe of the nation of Yisrael. And they shall bear the power of the strength of the bearer of Yah. And we know that the bearer of Yah, that he is a chab, is a hava, is love. He loves his Torah. That he will send the power of that Yoshach, the saving power of Torah, and his Yoshua, his Hamashiach. That he may speak to a nation within the nation. As we know that there shall be few therein, or few therewith, that go or enter therein. Few that enter into the dynamics of Torah. That they understand the parameter of what Torah speaks. Few there. Not even the wisest of men understand. He takes simpletons. Not men that think they know. Men that know that they do not know. Uh, and he instructs them. In the quietness of the hour they read. They study the Torah. They lahak. They meditate. And he brings out the revelation. And he shines in their pawning. Don't. Tell me you know the power of Torah. When your poor name doesn't express the wisdom of a wise old man and a wise old woman. It doesn't express the rishi, the ancient of Torah. Now, frankly, don't give a damn if you don't like what I say. I will not coddle a generation of people that despise Yah. I know how we despise him as we despise one another. You don't know what love is, woman. I like this man. I like the way he talks to himself. I would never talk to you the way I talk to me. If we would judge ourselves, we would have no need that one would judge us. Can I teach or preach? Which one? Preach or teach? Okay. Now, you shouldn't have said that, my friend. I want to teach. But I will try to calm myself with somewhat of a temperament. But you may grasp. I want to establish this first. The Torah speaks of uh, the Dabarim, of the words of Yah. His speech, the utterance, what he says... And that word, Abarim, it is the promises of Yah. And he cannot go back. He is almighty Yah and he changed not. Therefore, the sons of Yaakov, we that are Yisrael Yah, we that are the sons of Yaakov, the twelve Shabbats of Yisrael Yah. That's why he has not consumed us because we have done wickedly. And so by the power of his dabarim, the words, his words, the promises are made unto the nations. Not just the nation, but the nations. And he gives us a promise here that cannot be broken. I want to read it again. It says here in the writing of Bereshit in the book of Genesis, I will tell you what I read from again today. Learn how to listen as I began to express. It says here in the book of Bereshit, in the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. 
Yah says unto Abraham, He says, I will make of you. He uses the words Gadol. I will make of you a great. When something is expressed with greatness, it has distinctive qualities and characteristics. When what is expressed as the greatest ball player, his moves, the gravity of his leaping, it is so unconventional. So in order to understand the depths of his finesse, you must associate him with those that came before his time. So Yah uses the words Gadol. He says, shall make of you, Avraham, a great nation, or a Gadol, one that is important. When it is great, it is important. And the reason it is important because it has great value. It is of the great riches and substance. He said, I will make, I will fashion out of your loins, he says, a great nation. And then he speaks frankly. And he says that I shall barach, I will bless. I will bow down. And also the word barach means I will curse. I will bow down. I will hear you, I will give attention to your cries. He says, I will barak, I will bless you. And he says, I will make your Hashim, your name, your reputation, I will make your name great. Every nation draws on that name, Abraham. Whether they are Muslims, Jews, and Christians, they all draw upon the substance of that name. It was not that Yah did not bless Ishmael. He blessed him that he will become a mighty nation of people. And they will have riches as well. But he says to Abraham, from your loins, out of the lineage of Yitzchak and Yaakov, there shall be a people that's mighty, great. They shall be distinct, not because the women can shake their arms, or the men have some athletic proudness, because the women are wearing their hair as long as the woman, uh, dreaded down and all of that hippie fight. Uh, he did not say that. He said, I will make you a great nation. You shall be a mighty nation. And Yah says, I will. I will. I will, barach, I will bless you. He said, and not only will I bless you, I will make your name. He said, your reputation, your fame. What your name will pronounce when men hear it, it shall constitute a memorial in their mind. They will remember it. There shall be a monument of thought built upon what they have heard that the Great One, the Most High, shall do for Abraham. He says, not only will your name be great, and he says, and you shall be a beracha. He said, you shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. That that is the lineage of Abraham. We are beracha. We bring riches of Torah to people, to one another. Am Rab Atta is a great nation within the nation. Not only within the nations of the earth, but within the nation of Yisrael. So are we a nation of people that this is our conscript here? Do we act this way? Do we operate that way? He says, and you will be a blessing. Many times we are detriment to one another. I will say to God, many times we are detrimental to one another. We're not a blessing to one another. 
And the zero of Abraham, he says, and you will be a blessing. And look what Yah says in verse 3. We hear those on the corners always expressing the curse upon the nation of Yah's elect. But this is what Yah says uh, from the berith, from the begotten. He says, I want you to know Abraham and I will bless them. I will bless them. I will bless them that bless you. I will bless them that bless you. I will rock, I will bow down to them, even the strange nations. I will bless them that bless you. And he uses the words ara. I will curse, I will pour an anatomy upon those that curse you. That their substance shall not prevail. Their riches shall be as cake, and the worms shall consume it. I will errat them. I will curse him that curse you. And then he confirms it above all things. He said, and in you, Abraham, in you, in you, he did not say some, but call all the families, Mishpachai, all the families, those that have been progenerated and come out of the loins of Abraham, all families of the earth shall be Berecha. They shall be blessed. There shall be the adoration that proceeds out of their mouths. To the esteeming of Yah, that's what the word Berechiah means. We don't even open our mouths to him, do we? We don't even lift our voices unto Yah. I know what the dogs of the earth have taught you. But Yah says here that all families of the earth shall be blessed. It is the house. And what is blessed where the praises of Yah proceeds out of that be it. Whereby the prosperity and the wealth of his knowledge fortifies and refortifies the city. And that what is strong with great might and great strength. We are some of the most fledgling peoples upon the face of the earth. We are awake. We are insensitive above all unto Yah. Yes. And we express that among the nation how insensitive uh, we are. Because the Imma, the mothers, have not learned the way of sensitivity to feed that in the belly of their babies when they suck their milk. The titties are not a pleasure. Because they want men to look at the titties. They want their breasts to be seen of other men. Yeah. You have gave her that memory glad. That it will be life and breath and the blessing unto Yisrael. Yeah. And say they want to raise their titties up so every man can see that. And the men, boys. It doesn't make one a man because one has a definitive of what a man is because... This lad here has the same similitude as I do. There's the profound wisdom of the strength of a man in Turan. Yes. It is. Because there is no sensitivity to Yah, we have no sensitivity. We have lost all sense of sensitivity. Mothers, men have entreated them so callously that there is nothing. It's almost like killing an animal or hunting down one that is tense. The meat doesn't taste the same. When animals tense up, it causes the meats. 
That's why you have to take them out surprisingly. And you don't want to run behind them when you hit them because uh, then they become more intense. They're guarding themselves against death. And we don't want this sin to die in our hearts so we become hardened. We become more hardened. We become more cold. We become more distant. We distance ourselves from Yah. And your distance from Yah is your distance with me. The way you show Yah love, you will show me that if you're cold with him, you'll be cold with me. We don't even have the ability to greet each other. It is so out of the norm for us to do that. So people, they don't know how to greet each other. I was in the store the other day. and I could tell the man was part of his resolution. He was going to get in shape. He was a big man. And the product he was buying, it was to give you that energy to get strength. So I said, he must be a power lifter. I said, how you doing, man? How is everything? And of course, just that alone inspired the man. How do I know that? Because the next place I went, an Arabic man, he says to me, you're so inspiring. You give such inspiration when I talk to you. He said that the zero of Abraham shall bless the nations. It doesn't mean that one has to give material things or monies. We give them the heart of Yah. Yah is love. Hallelujah. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. They shall have an adoration. They shall live prosperously. They shall have the wealth of Yah's Torah. Uttering out of the mouths of wise men, they shall see the insignia, the sample, the strength of Yah's power. In the army of his mighty men, the Geba warriors. They shall see that. They shall be strengthened by help meets to galvanize them, to galvanize them, to galvanize them, to make them even stronger and mightier. The beauty is even more pronounced. That's a great nation. Well, that doesn't give me much to lay upon. It gives me promise to rest in the Dabari of Yah. You find those on the street corners everywhere and they will tell you that the Hebrews. Yet it doesn't mean a damn thing. I want to read this. What Torah says. In the writing of Matitiya, just listen. Yakahan, the Emerson. He says unto those in Metitia, when he saw the many of the Pushim, the Pharisees, and so these are groups that separate themselves from the other groups. These are those that think that they are much more superior than others. So they are the mindset of the Pushim or the Pharisees. And he saw those that called themselves the Sadduchim or the Sadducees. We find them as well. These are the ones that are more righteous than anyone. They drink like sailors. They do every kind of thing. They sleep with every one of the women that is in their midst. They give them a piece of paper and say, you're my wife. And when they become despondent with them... You write them a piece of paper and say, you know, my wife. So monogamous is not of a great strength unto men. I ask you hypocrites, is Yah monogamous with one nation? Is he monogamous with one nation? 
Was Yahshua monogamous with one nation? He came to his people. It's sad how our minds have been shaped by our delusion that we think we know. We base things on things that we have heard. It's not on what the Torah says. That's what he says. He asked them, uh, he said, why are you coming to my mikvah or my imasing? He asked them, he called them a generation of atlas, of vipers. And he asked them, who have warned you to flee the wrath or the ebra, the great indignation of Yah that is poured out without measure, who have warned you to flee the wrath to come? So he says unto them, I want you to bring fruit. Remember that. How do we bear fruit? I will show you that as well. See, a nation must have fruit. The fruit trees out here, no value. Can you turn that down, that fan down some? It is of no great value. You're safe. Let them do it. Sit down, my friend. It is of no value at all. It is of no value unless it bear fruit. He commanded them to bring fruit meant for repentance. Uh, that they are sincere fruit. That they are real fruit. And he said, I want to tell every last one of you all something. He said, I want you to think not within yourself because you say, we say that. I'm not like this one. I'm not like him. I'm not like her. I'm a Hebrew. I'm an Israelite. I'm a Jew. I'm a Baptist. He said, think not. Think not. I don't even want you to even think. As parents would say, don't even think it. Think not. To say within yourself, we are, we have Abraham for our father. Because he is our avat. He said, you think that's something because you say that I am a Hebrew. And you live like a damn heathen. You rape with tyranny the minds of the daughters of Tizayon. You finish, you throw them away like they're a piece of trash. And they're doing that. Believe me. They don't like me, that's all right. I don't care. But they are aware of me. Isn't that amazing? Think not to say within yourself that we have Abraham, our father. Your can say to you, you damn beasts. I say to you that Almighty Yah is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. He was the rock. And he is the rock. He said, Yah is able out of these stones, those that don't even know the power and the wisdom of Abraham, uh, to raise up children unto him. Because I have all the mysteries. Uh. That's why Yahshua came to seek and to save them. That. They were hidden. They were hidden in what a cold and wicked world. Their hearts were stony. Our hearts are stony. We don't have the heart of flesh. We don't want to deal with that. He says he's able to take up these old stony hearts. And cause the heart of flesh. That's a nation. A nation is one that cares for the subjects of the nation. Not a brutal tyrant. We're brutal because we care for no one but us. It's the spirit of a tyranny or tyranny. It's cold. It's indifference. It has no sensitivity. He said, don't think because you're seed of Abraham. Don't think because you got all these damn dreadlocks and plots in your head. You're silly. Man walking down the street, his hair, as long as his wife or his companion, she got on jeans like him, and they call themselves 
Aru give a damn if their skin is black as star. They're not. Yah is able to raise up out of these stones a seed unto Abraham. So don't even think in your stupid mind. You can twist that any way you want to. There's simplicity associated with that. He commanded them to bring fruit. Beri, fruit. That meets, M E E T. The wife or the issue is the help meet. She is the help meet of the man. He is the rush. He is the rush. I know they came out of the same creative power, but we as a body, we have a rush. And he is the rush. He is the rush. And on a man's rush, he doesn't mistreat the body. Although we do mistreat the body. Although we feed the body lies and we feed it all kinds of corrupt things, don't we? He is the rush. He made him to be the strength of his kingdom. He gave the woman to be the beauty of the strength of the man. That she said to him, you are strong. You are my warrior. Make him rise up for battle every day. Make him do that. We don't have that. And the old Yashish, the elderly men, the wisdom, and the old woman. She may not have a husband. Her desire should not be one of wantonness or sexual lust. She got to have somebody. You 80 years old woman, sit down. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. Sit down and serve Yah and love him. Oh man, serve Yah. Is there beauty that speaks with great volume? That even in their walk, they teach the young daughters the beauty of, uh, of the beard of Yah. They teach them the wisdom of Yah. We don't even find that today. We don't find that. Torah talks about those women that they just served the house of Yisraya. Men that were faithful men. You talk like that even among this little small crowd. Some of y'all get nutty as hell. We get nutty. We get stupid. Because it's not a love for you, it's a love for you. You think you know what's best for you, you don't. Hallelujah. He knows what's best for us. And we got naughty about that. He's talking to me, I'm talking to his house. I don't care if you don't like what I say. You all that are listening, I will not get one dime today, all right? He said, bring fruit there for meats, meats for repentance. That's what he said. Teshuva, teshuva, to, to cause you to turn and change. Those are the real fruit. It's almost like someone coming to someone saying, forgive me, I did you wrong. But they know it's disingenuous. When you ask that, you will know that that individual will see shame in them because they will know you're genuine. They will see the beauty of fruit and say, I want to eat from that tree as well. And we'll go and say, well, I was wrong, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean nothing. It is a self-righteousness. As Azar King taught unto us, how many times? Seven times? Seven times? That which is impossible with man, it is possible with you. And that's the first resolve of a man's mind. That's too many times. It's not. He give, forgives us daily. And constantly. And so we as wise men, we learn by meditation. Studying the Torah. I, listen. I'm going to teach. He said preach. I'm going to preach and I'm going to teach. All right. We have not learned how to confess our faults one unto the other. That we may have effectual fervent prayer. As a young boy, I would always, when Evangel Hartsfield was instrumental in my life, he would say things. I would get upset for the moment, next moment. I've never been one to retain something for long periods of time. Next moment, okay. I said, I love this man. I love him the more. That made me appreciate him the more when he would correct me and straight me out. That would make him love me the more when he would straight me out. Because although in his in his ability to express love, that was the only way he knew, just like my mother. She knew no other way to express love to me. And now Yah has refined that by wisdom of Torah, 
that I can express the pure love of Yah. By loving Him above all with everything. And then I love Yisrael Yah like I love myself. That's a difficult with us, isn't it? You're not going into the kingdom. Listen to this. I want you to hear this. I want you all to be attentive. Just hear this. Hallelujah. He commanded them to bring, to bring fruit. He did. And so there was a noble prophet by the name of Ezra. Saw the same thing and he speaks. Listen to it. I want you just to listen. It says in the book of Ezra. Third Ezra. Listen to it. And I'll tell you where it's at when I finish. The Nobi, as he speaks unto the Melach, the messenger that came to enlighten him with the wisdom of Yah's Torah. Ezra says, is there any other people? Is there any other nation, Yah, that knows you, that Yada? That experience your wealth and your beauty. Is there any other nation that knows you besides Yisrael? Now that was the reason he asked that question. Is there any other nation that Yada that knows you besides Yisrael? And then he says a compound question. He says, "Of oh, what people have so? Oh my! What people so have believed?" When you say all oh, mine, oh, oh man, you saying to Yah, I confirm my faithfulness with great support, my fidelity. That's why we better be quick to hear, slow to speak. That's what you're saying to Yah. I want you all to hear me, all right? Don't worry about nothing else. Listen. You don't have to look for nothing else. Just listen to what I'm reading. Please do that. When you go to the doctor, can I ask you a question? I don't give a damn if you'd get upset. When you go to the doctor, when he's talking to you, are you trying to find your medicine bottle or you just listen to him, don't you? Come on, Disraya. You want to show him you have clarity of the importance of what he says. And damn it, at Yard's house, we don't give a damn. We listen to that man. His trained skill commands you to listen. So when I ask you to listen, just listen to me, please. Just listen. Listen to what I say is important. You can discuss that and look at that later on. You go to the doctor. You listen to everything he say. You're not answering your telephone. You, uh, uh, I'll answer that later. But when it comes to Yah, we, we got so many distractions. And we are the people that want to lead the people of Yah. Just listen. There's a time just to be quiet and listen. Because as I'm going to show us something here. He says this. Is there any other people that know Yah? Or a people that believe that have been nourished in Torah. That are so faithful. And when we say Amen, we're confirming our support to Yah. We're confirming our fidelity and our faithfulness. That's when you say that. So when you say, when Yah says to you, we need to deal with our own heart, we say, oh, man, that means you're, do, you're doing that. And when one does that, that's why he said to those, bring fruit. Bring fruit, meat for repentance. You better have something that is of substance. Listen to this. He says, oh, whoever, what people has so believed, uh, your covenant... Uh, your berith, uh, your, be, uh, your brit. He says, as Yaakov, he believed what he said. He said, your name shall not be called Israel. Israel, Israel. He said, but your name shall be called, uh, your name shall not be called Yaakov, but it shall be called Israel. You shall be no yeah. more the supplant planter. Yeah. But it implies that you have prevailed. And Yaakov always prevailed. Why? Because we have the covenant blessing from Abraham. We have the covenant blessing. We are blessing to every, I don't care where we go, we are blessing, our words are blessing. We are blessing to one another. Our words are blessing to each other. Our speech blesses one another. Our attitude blesses one another. We can't say that about ourselves if we are 
brutally honest with ourselves. We are not. Well, how do we get there? We must be taught how to get there. We must have examples before us, men and women. The elderly women need to get off their nutty fruit, the fruity world. And abandon their stupidity. The men that are so damn immature and think that they're wise, they need to grow up. Listen to what he says. He says, and yet, their reward, their shakha, their, their payment or the wages they have earned. He said, it doesn't even appear so. It doesn't even appear like Israel, this nation that has come out of the loans of Abraham, they have no wealth. He said, it doesn't appear so. He said, and their labor, listen, and their labor, and their labor has no fruit. He told them to bring fruits, meat for repentance. Why did he say that? Can I read this? He said, there is no fruit. He said, yeah, I have gone to the land of the Goyim, the heathen. I have seen the heathens. And I see that they flow. The heathens, they flow with wealth. Now, I know what T.D. Jakes would tell you that means. He said they flow with chayin. They have strength. They have health. They are mighty. They are blessed. They are blessing. Not money, although prosperity is a part. They have chayil, just like the virtuous woman. She is a virtuous, she is a chayil woman. She is a woman of great strength. They have the ability to buy or to purchase. We can buy the truth. And we don't have to sell it, Yisrael. We have the substance of Torah. We have the wisdom of the substance of Torah. We have the health and the wealth because our, our nephesh prosperous. Beloved, I would above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in top excellence uh, health even as your nephesh. Because we prosper in our minds, in our mind. When your mind is healthy, your body is healthy. When your thoughts are healthy, your attitude is healthy. When your concepts of life is based upon the Torah, then your life is healthy. And our lives are not healthy. Because we're based on a false paradigm. I wish in my days that I had a man to talk to me this way and teach me. There's no saying that I would have been far the head of the eighth. I would have been far the head and I would have. I wish I had someone that, even with the ones that taught me, I comprehended it. And I received what they said. And I was a student, even though they was ignorant, I was more ignorant than them. But I listened. And listen, I would ponder what they would say. And I would go back and meditate. It's not a generation that does that. So we're not a generation of hyen. Why? We have no fruit. He said, here's a nation, here are people. I see them flow with wealth. Listen now. Now this nation doesn't have fruit. These people don't. Why? He says, and they don't even think upon your mitzvah, your commandments. We don't think on the commandments of Yah. When that Sudduchim and the Pushim came to him, he said, you wicked dogs of hell, you don't even think on the mitzvah of Yah. That's why he gave us a constitution with statutes and judgments that will cause us to think on his mitzvah, to think on him, and see how tough he is to us, Yisrael. He said, Yachahan said, you had no fruit because uh, you don't even think on the commandments of Almighty Yah. And our minds are so far from the commandments. Let's get real uh, and be honest, Yisra'ya. No, you don't get this by reading. You get this uh, by examining your own heart to see how deficient you are. And I know how deficient I am. If I can sit and hear like I hear the Akim teacher, I get great strength. I get a revenue of wealth from them. Because I know how to listen. I found hundreds of messages in what they teach. They don't even know what they're teaching. Yeah. 
They don't even know. He said, they have no fruit. Why, Yah? Because they think not upon your commandments. He says, where you therefore are wickedness. This is what he is saying to Yahweh, the wickedness of the nation. These nations are wicked. He said, weigh our wickedness now in the balance. And we know that Yah has a just balance. Do we not know that? He said, weigh our wickedness in the balance. He says, and theirs also. Theirs also. Have we ever approached Yah when we have a critical that we think is valid against one to say, weigh my wickedness against their wickedness? Uh, no, you weigh yourself righteousness. Uh, you weigh yourself righteousness against the righteousness of Yah. When we know to do right and do it not, it is sin. When Yah commands us to confess our faults, uh, we can see the faults of everyone else. That's not a powerful nation. That's why he says, weigh their wickedness uh, and ours also because I know that you're just uh, and you're righteous. You're sadiq. Weigh it in your balance, Yah. Weigh our wickedness in the balance. Uh, and there's also that dwell the earth. Uh, he said, so shall your name. And so shall your name. Nowhere be found. Nowhere your name will be found. He said, weigh it out. He said, damn it, I want to say this. He said, weigh out what they got. And this prophet says, your name will be found nowhere else but among Israel. Your name. We out there. They don't even know your name, Mia. And I look at the house. I look at our deplorable state, a nation that is great. You won't even find your name nowhere. And yet, high year, the riches of power flow with them. Their substance is much. They have so much. They have armies. Hallelujah. They have riches. Their influence is strong. When you find a high yield daughter of Tizion, she has influence. She has the influence to change the lives of others. We as a nation, we cannot bring one under our, the growth of our hearts to influence them. Uh, you should always see the beauty of you in them. You should always see that. And then the prophet goes on to say, Or oh, when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in your sight? Tell me where these wicked folks have not sinned. Tell me where I have not sinned. Tell me where you have not sinned. Tell me where you have not sinned. Tell me where I have not sinned. He said, all these people flow with such great chayil. You tell me they have not sinned? See, it's not about that. This is what it's about. Or what people, or what people have so kept your commandments? Now, we know we keep the commandments, don't we? That's how we think. We say, well, we keep the commandments, we keep the Shabbat. We don't guard the Shabbat, Yisrael. I was saying to the Almighty as we walk the cross here, I say, no burdens, take no burdens upon the Shabbat. Play that teaching after this today, please. That we bring no burdens in the house of Yah on the Shabbat. And so the messenger inquired with Yah, Show me that, yeah. I want you to show me. Show me this people. We keep your commandments. And that's why these false proselytizers uh, with their lies and their damn dreadlocks uh, and their stringy damn hair, yes. their plots, their fringes and their, and their supposedly garments of military power, they cross every boundary. Makes no difference who they are. We don't sin. We keep your commandments. Lies, they don't. 
We don't, keep, we don't guard the commandments of Yah. The word Shema is we hedge it about with the fence. Uh, we honor that we keep, that we preserve it. And we're damn liars. When he commands us, we're all the statutes of Yah. We're to hinge upon two commandments, to love Yah with all and to love your neighbor as yourself. Here we fail every time. Uh, we get a passing mark of a F. That's what we got. And we can pretend that we got passing grades. Uh, we're full of lies. We're full of lies. I'm teaching this because I'm going to begin a series on judgment. Why? We're just dumb. I know I am. See, I'm not ashamed to say I'm dumb. I'm not ashamed to say I'm ignorant. I'm not ashamed to say I am unlearned. It. There are those that would say, we're going to have the parashah. We're going to have the parashah. Where they will read Torah, read places. But the word parashah means not, doesn't only mean read. We're going to have this portion of the Torah that we're going to read. But the word parashah means uh, to explain. So we, every time I come here, I explained to explain what it means. So no one will go out here and learn that. I'm an unlearned man, but today I won't be unlearned in this simple dimension of truth. And if you, if you grab hold to a little each time, you will have much. It's almost like the forefather, the old granny, putting back a dollar or a dime a week. She realized she had all those silver dimes. When she had time, she could sneak back a bow dollar. She could put down a 50 cents piece. Didn't even check it to count it. But she knew she was building on something of a little strength. And one day she goes in there when she realizes how much she got. Her mind is just so exuberant she doesn't know what to spend it on. She puts it back and adds more to that. And as the more it grows, she says, well, if something happened to me, they'll have at least a little something to continue on. We don't have a damn thing to walk till tomorrow. We sell it out for nothing. Hallelujah. We greet you all. This last verse of this. He says. The message. He says to Yah. You may indeed. You may Yah. Zachin always remind us of this. Zachin Birmin. In his early days of teaching us and preaching. He would say because you're wrong. That doesn't mean everyone else is wrong. That's what he says. He says Yah you may indeed find individual men. Who keep your commandments. You may indeed find them that love Yah. We don't want to believe that. You may indeed find individual men that have this great propensity for Torah. You may indeed find the daughters of Tizayom that are beautiful and have a great love affair with Yah. You may indeed. You may indeed find individuals. I'll tell you who I'm reading from. And when you read from this book, read the next four chapters after because they're all connected. You're not going to understand this because Yah says, the messenger said, and all of that, he said, I tell you what, even if I explain things to you, you will not understand. It's all about one thing, judgment, and I'll explain it to you. So you need to read uh, 3rd Ezra 3, 4, 5, and 6. He says this, you may indeed find individual men who keep your commandments, but nations, but nations, but nations, but nations, he said, you will not find it. What makes a nation? What makes up a people? What makes a family? You had this man that was an individual. He marries this woman that was an individual. He began to progenerate. He began to fertilize the very life in her. And they have a child. And then from that child, uh, uh, they, depart, they have another child. So it begins with one individual that are united to make two individuals that come together to make four, five, ten individuals. Isn't that so? Yes, so if you got one individual man that knows Torah, you got one individual daughter that knows Torah, they are espoused to one another. Then from that will come a living birth. For everything she speaks will bring life. And everything that he says will cause life to rise up in one another. 
we call some of the most deplorable folly to rise up, don't we? And we know that folly is the downfall of every nation. This is how this man talked to Yah. And the messenger said, I tell you what you've talked enough. Now I want you to answer some things for me. I want to ask you some questions. And if you can answer these things, uh, hallelujah, then I'll show you. Great nation that Yah promised out of the loin of Abraham. Did he not promise that? Sure he did. I want to read this. In Bereshit, that was from 3rd Ezra chapter 3. Read 3rd Ezra chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5. And we will see the conversation, even chapter 6. I think it's only about 9 chapters in the whole book. So read them all. He says that Abraham shall become a great nation. And I want to get into the details here for a moment. And what has been the hindrance? Abraham shall become a great nation, a mighty nation. There will be nations that bless Abraham. And because of Abraham, he will be a blessing unto other nations. That's what we are about, people. He will curse them that curse even the seed of Abraham. When one does us wrong, Yah will deal with them. And we wonder why our minds are not stable because we're doing the seed of Yah wrong. We're not affectionate, we're not kind, we're not loving. We think we are, but we're not that way. We got this false delusion of what love is. I feel different about my wife, I will protect her over this one. No, I'll protect Yisraya. She's wrong, I'll rebuke her, tell her, you're wrong, woman. Examine your heart. She knows I'm telling the truth. She knows I'm faithful. My love will point out every fallacy. Just like I pointed out to us. Well, there are us that we can point out the fallacies of this one. You're not going to point out the fallacies of that one. That's my brother, but that man, you see all of his weaknesses. But that's my sister. You complain about that whole, who is my Sister, my brother, Isaac Cain told us that as he taught that profound message. I, I wanted, to, I, I told Ark Davis, I'm going to let him finish that message uh, uh, on, uh, on my Wednesday. He said, well, you know, we need you to put the rod on us a little bit. I said, no, but I want to hear the conclusion of that or let him walk that some more, you know. I really want to hear that. Hallelujah. Because I have never heard it taught like that now. We hypocrites, we think we have. He brought that thing out line upon line. He, he brought out the concepts and the dynamics of that. You hadn't heard it like that. That Ach brought it out. I don't care what you say, you had not. He brought it out righteously as a wise man. He did. And that's just a fact. Well, bless you that we got men that have the gems of his wisdom in their heart. And can bring it forth with excellent speech. Well, I can't do that. No, I know you can't do it. It's almost like a man told me, well, I can't do that. I know he can't do it. But if I can do something, just give me that. I got it. I watch those come here and watch us lay blocks and all that. And they think it's just, just the easy little thing you can lay and that stuff stays up there. Well, I can do that. Pre- I know you can. Oh, y'all can. Because you watch them and you think it's easy. Huh? Here's the trial. And they can't keep a, a, an ounce of mud up there, huh? They don't even know how to keep it on the trial, see? Why? Because they have not watched and observed. They have not looked because if they saw what I'm doing. They will know how to do it. They may not can do it like me. No more than you can do this like me. No more you can bring this out like me. You're boasting now. Can I read this here? The promise unto Abraham. That Yah gave a great promise. Hallelujah. It says here. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, this is in Bereshit, Genesis, chapter 18, and verse 18. Yah says, even when Yah promised unto Abraham, and we know that Sarah, she laughed. Can I bring forth so she somewhat mocked Yah. 
And it says, as the messengers of God rose up from him, that even with what Yah had his intentions to do to the cities and the surrounding plains, he says this about Abraham, seeing Genesis 18, 18, he used the word seeing or your eye and I won't listen when I, I'm not trying to show you how much I know, I'm trying to break down words that we can understand the value and the insight that they speak to us. Someone writes me and tell me, you should not pepper your messages with Hebrew words. I get a letter from someone that support the work. Now this Jezebel that wrote me the letter said that she has not said one penny. And then this Ahot didn't even know that. She writes with the wonderful offering, say, Reach, I love the way you insert the Hebraic words in the definitive and bring, it, it brings a, a profound clarity of thing. So he says in verse 18, he used the word seeing. It is the word ayin. It is the word, you must understand, not only with the spiritual concept, of the knowledge of Yah's plan, he said, but it will be open in a natural way. It will be open in an intellectual way. We can grasp onto intellectual things uh, to understand things in a precise fashion, uh, although we may not understand the dynamics of the spiritual application of it. He says, seeing your eye in or your mind open, seeing Abraham, Shashula, uh, not might, not a possibility, surely become uh, a great. And a mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Every nation that robbed shoulders with him shall be blessed. With his zero they shall be blessed. Everyone that rubs shoulders with the true Hebrew they shall be blessed. Everyone that touches, everyone that blesses one. Everyone's words that are kind. He's going to bless that nation. Are we not a... How those people? Are we not a royal priesthood are you not he said a set apart a nation and every nation shall be blessed every people that that bless the zero of Abraham shall be blessed why there's a reason why when Ezra said that they don't even bring forth fruit Shame! yeah at least we ponder and I know you can find a man or a woman that her, her dedication is real he said but these damn fools don't have nothing Yah says the reason that Abraham shall become a great nation. Do you know the reason? I read it in the next verse. He says, for I know him. I want y'all to know me. That's why I'm a confessor of, I, I do it all the time. Not my brother, my sister, but it's me, oh Yah. I need you to cleanse me. Not my enemy, all the warriors that are against me, oh yeah, I need you to wash me. He says, I know Abraham, Ayata. My heart experienced the beauty of his heart. Our hearts are interwoven. That's a great compassion. He's my friend. He doesn't call everybody friends. Just let me be the doorkeeper, the one that sweeps where no dust and no dirt, your gold. Just let me do that, yeah. He says, for I know him, that he will serve, he will command. That word is vitally important. Now, that doesn't mean you discourage your sons and your daughters, fathers and mothers. That doesn't mean you talk to them like they're crazy as two damn fruitcakes. The Torah commands the father, don't even provoke your children, your sons, to anger. Don't do that. You set him straight, but don't provoke him to anger. Mothers, you don't provoke your sons and your daughters to anger. You don't go out and talk to the damn world any kind of way. You don't talk to each other that kind of way. And there was a handicap in my life when my mother would call me, you bastard, I hate you. She, that would scar me. And I would go out and cry. I would go out and, and y'all just had his hands on me. 
You son of this, you, she would say, you good for nothing. Man, those words were powerful. You know, I would straighten a child out and crack the backside. I won't do them like that. I wasn't raised with a daddy to. So I could see the beauty of a man. I wasn't raised with that. I didn't have no father to say and grasp me and to be affectionate to me. I had one the other day I was talking to, and he said, Ria, you know I've never met my natural father, but he said my stepfather was so kind. I said, hell, you met your father. I said, yeah, your father. You never met him. I said, he was your daddy, boy. He said, oh, preacher, you, you just going to set me straight. I don't care what it is. I said, that was your daddy. I said, I was not. It was a great blessing for me to meet my natural father that two hours. No. I said, would it have been I never met him? I said, that is your daddy. I said, that's, no, 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 no. That's your father. I said, Yah has birthed you. You've never seen him in the physical, but he's your father, isn't he? He'll say to me, get on me, preacher. You, you know how to bring this thing down. I like that. I don't have to think about what I say. I say, you had a daddy. And he was more valuable than, than what you thought was a daddy. That's your daddy. That's your father, man. He is the one that birthed life in you. That's why you're the man you are today. Hell, he wasn't that. He is. He didn't fight me. Oh, you say, preacher, I like you. You don't hold nothing back, do you? No, sir. There's no time to hold it back. Yeah. You had a beautiful father. He's not a stepfather. He's your daddy. Yeah. You call him a damn stepdaddy. He's your daddy. Yeah. That's who birthed you, huh? That's who put the law of righteousness in you, man. I don't give a damn how it came. He's the one. You all don't think I talk to people like that. <laughs> you say, Ray, I can back off the telephone a little bit. That's all right. I back off, but I'm not backing down. I back off of it, but I'm not backing down. You got this telephone frying on this end. I know that's right. But I'm not backing down. That one iota. That one word. He said, how much he appreciated the man that... I said, no, that's your daddy, man. Don't let nobody kid you. Believe me. He said, I do. I believe what you say, preacher. Hallelujah. You don't have to like me. I don't like you. How about that? He says, for I know that he will command, survive with authority. He has the power to command his children. Not only his children, but those that are associated with him. His household after him. Uh, that they should keep the way of derech, the path, the procedures, the way of Yah. And you will know they're keeping the way of Yah because they shall do justice. And what else? Judgment. Mishpatim. When we don't judge ourselves, we're not keeping the way of Yah. He said, I know they're going to do right. He said, because I know Abraham. I know him. And that's why he's going to become a great nation. And it's one thing that is pronounced by the seed of Abraham. They do justice. And in any nation you must have justice. In any nation you must have justice. What I teach on judgment, the purpose, you'll understand why you must have judgment. I don't want to go that direction that day. I want to understand the concept and the, and the infrastructure of a great nation. That's why he gave us a constitution that is not like anything else. It is the, a constitution is... It is a sum of great wisdom or the aggregate. It takes all the greatness of Yah and it forms this aggregate that gives you the sum of his wealth. He gives us statutes. He gives us laws. Uh, he gives us uh, ordinance. He gives us, and this is his sum. And it produces a constitution that produce a great wealth in the minds of his nation, but it must be commanded. Those that speak it must have authority. 
And those that instruct us, we must see the manifestation of that authority in them. We can't, people stand before us and they say, man, he is so shallow and weak. He doesn't, come on, this man is not real. That's why we have to know them that labor. We have to be among them and see them and watch them, consider them. And we don't want to do that, Yisra'ya. I live in this just like I do in the fields. And I work when I work. I want to make it easy for my ach. I want to make it that way. I work when I work. I'm never afraid of work. I remember as a young boy in the cotton field. I was young in England. But I enjoyed the cotton field. You know why I enjoyed the cotton fields? Because I wanted to help granny out. I didn't make much money. The way they cheated those people back then. Oh, faulty scales. But I knew I could get out there and pick some cotton. Little old thing that burlap sack put way behind me. But I wanted to get that cotton. And I knew that granny was going to get some monies. And if she got enough, we walked down. We would all take a bath. We didn't take too many. We walked down to the little center of town. They got them big barrels of candy. You may get a few pennies. You knew you could buy something. And the treat of that would last for days. And when you walked in those stores, as they would say, not your face, grease, but grass. She didn't grease our face. She grazed them. You all hear me. And you were all clean and you walked together two by two holding hands. And you didn't get out of sequential step and you did not act like a clown and there was no fire there weren't that many cars but she was behind you and she had her nice little old stick and she walked behind you and when you used to get to that store your eyes get that big you knew not to touch nothing but your heart was touching that candy barrel Six, seven, a dime, a dime, mine. What are you talking about? We would have a wild thing with a dime. You used to go in there and get a piece of candy. Everybody, yes, ma'am. <laughs> piece of candy. It was real candy back then. You got a nice piece of candy for three cents. Nickel? Oh, talk to me. I love candy. Butternuts, paydays, but I can't have them. No, the last time I had one or a piece of candy, I love them. I love me a butternut. Payday, a Hershey. Don't buy me one. I know you don't bring nothing. That, don't do it. I like that rich chocolate Hershey candy bars. You get that nice French chocolate. It's right. I eat the whole thing. That's why I can't mess with it, because it messed me up. And so we knew exactly the protocol. He knew Abraham. Does he know us? He knows our sins. And the shame we have brought upon him. He said he will command his house. See, you must uphold the constitution of Yah. If we don't uphold that, we are not a nation. There is something that has come into our hearts to cause us to turn away from Yah's great constitution. And the constitution always established our uh, beauty, our characteristics. That those that say that those are the dark hue or those that came on slave ships, they are the physical characteristics of the Hebrew Israelites. The characteristics is form and the physical. Can I ask you a question? You can take one. You began to train their body. When I went to the military, I was 155 pounds. I came out of basics, I had put on 15, nearly 20 pounds. You could see my body. You could see the definition of my body. It was shape. There was symmetry there. The facial features were different. I was clean. No drinking, no nothing. I was clean. My body was lean and strong and muscular. So even that, just by the law of the military, 
It changed my physical dynamics. It changed my look. It changed my physical appearance. It changed my facial appearance. That's what a nation that has the Torah, that is the appearance of Yah's nation. Because the whole physical appearance is based upon a Torah, a covenant, a constitution that changed the way they look, changed their body, changed everything. And they don't have no pretense or no makeup on. I didn't have no makeup on. I didn't need no girdle. My waist was just what it was. Still 28, 29. I had grown. Why? Because the push-ups and the sit-ups, 500, 300. And the walking on what we call the monkey bar. And running those three, four, five miles in the morning. And coming back and having a wonderful meal. It's one thing about the military. They fed you well. You eat well every day. You eat well every day. Omelets, potatoes three times a day. You're getting the proper nourishment in your body when you go out there and do them push ups. Mm. 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 You could do them. You could run those three, four, five miles in the morning. It changed the whole physical characteristics and the physical dynamics. So, this is the identity of Yah's people that our whole physical dynamics is changed. Because we keep the Torah of Yah. There was one thing that changed the whole dynamics of man. It is the power of the God nature. It is when Nahash. Can I show an example? If someone speaks to us, instructs us, uh, we can discern when the whole dynamics of their body change, can't we? We can look at their face, we can look at their bodies. Can, uh, come on, don't be hypocrites on me. But nobody can discern you, can they? Yeah, help me, yeah. Nobody can discern you. But you can discern everyone else. You know everyone else, isn't it? And you can see the physical change. And that's what Torah does. It doesn't just change us inwardly. It changes the whole dynamics. That's why I don't like the word soul. So you all stop using that soul. It changes the nefesh. He changed the living substance of us. Our life changes. Our attitude, our ideas, it change. And so when that change, our physical look change. It's almost like when a man who began to feel healthy about himself, he even looks different, doesn't he? When a woman began to pay more attention to herself, uh, she began to, with dignity, began to lift herself from the cauldron of her damn wicked, stupid ways. Uh, her face looked different. Her body looks different. I don't care if she lost not one pound. She still looks different, Yisrael. And so that's what Yah does. He just, well, change from the inside. No, he, he changed the whole man. When Moshe came down from the mountain, his whole appearance was changed. His whole dynamics were changed. And when we go in the way of Yah, when we walk in Yahshua, our whole dynamics, our physical being is changed. Our look is changed. We don't look the same way we look. You understand? So when people see, oh my, is that you? Not something of mockery. Seeing that he shall become a great nation. One reason because he shall command his children and his household. He shall teach them that they shall bear fruit. Bring you fruit, therefore meat for repentance. You wicked people. He shall bring that. Hallelujah. I've never tried to teach things that I don't understand. I read stuff in this book, I say, ah, leave that alone. And that's why there are so many that are twisted because there are men trying to teach things they don't understand. I understand everything I need to understand to reveal unto us the beauty of Yah. There's nothing I don't understand. Nothing. We need the depths of that. Wisdom is principle, isn't it? But all you're getting gets what? Bina? The ability to discern where? Try the spirit. Shouldn't we do that? We should try the ruach of here. By the ruach of Torah. No, you try that, you refine that. The word try is sarah. 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 It is to test it with fire. Yisraya, do we test ourselves with the fire Torah? We are such damn hypocrites. But you test me that way. 
You test, test your brother that way and your sister, don't we? Try the spirit. Try the spirit of your heart. Try the spirit of the ruach of your heart. It's just, the word ruach is just a life uh, that causes one's mind to pulsate and, and cause there be uh, the ability to receive substance. Like I'm alive, right? So I'm breathing. All right? So it causes you to receive breath. That's what life is. That's what it's all about. It causes us to receive life. It causes us to receive the witness of Yahshua HaMasih. So we try the spirit. We try the life that that promotes what's in us. We try the spirit by this spirit, by the spirit of Torah. And see if your spirit is of the imuna. See if you're walking in the, in the imuna of Yah. If I see an ark falling, I'm going to help him not to fall. If I see a, a hot falling, I'm going to send a message. Tell her, don't do that. I'm not going to shy away from, from my achim, my hokim. He taught us, who is my brother? Who is my sister? Who is my mother? And he showed the beauty of that forgiveness, broken down in a way that it was just magnificent. Hell, we all men couldn't have taught that. I couldn't have. Isn't that amazing? Because we think we could have taught it. No, you couldn't have. I couldn't have. He gave, I don't know how many messages he gave me off that. I said, man, let him hit that. Okay. Hallelujah. What has been the degenerative power to cause us to fall. I know I read this last week, but I must read it again to get this wisdom in us. Again, better sheet, Genesis 3, 7. I want you to understand the first thing now. I, I, I know, but I did emphasize that enough on last week. When their eyes were open, let us examine to see the first thing they did, all right? It says in Genesis 3, 7, it says, And the eyes of them both, they were pochads. They became very observant. I've never been in the assembly or the fellowship or the birth of a child. You that have, when your child opened the eyes, do they begin, the eyes just began to jet around, they look. They become very observant, don't they? They do. I have no experience in that, you can tell me. Their little eyes. So their eyes become, they cannot discern, can they? Neither, neither could their eyes. How do I know their eyes could not discern? Well, let me proceed. Genesis 3, 7. And both of their eyes were opened. And it says, and they knew that they were a room. They knew that they were naked. They knew that they had some shrewd wisdom. That they had a composition of knowledge that even the mind of Almighty Yahweh could not defy it. That's what children think, don't they? I look at Lily Yarameya, he thinks he has something. We have to ask that little man. He shows his little strength. He can show his attitude too. So they began to a room. They knew that they were truth. They were sarola. Well, what is the first act of this? The same way we are. When our sins are open unto us, our ways, uh, we become very arum. We'll get shrewd with someone. We'll get malice. Come on, talk to me, people. You all might as well say, y'all help that man. The simple truth that he teaches us that is so excellent. When our eyes are open, even upon us, the first thing we do, there's a word that the Torah uses. It is arum. We become very shrewd. Don't say that to me. I know who I am. We began to take this crafty counsel of our own minds. You've never done that, have you? You've never taken your own crafty counsel to resolve a matter. You don't do that. I'm quite sure you've never done that. You're much more excellent than you are. And that's what we do. We take, this is what they did. And they began to orchestrate uh, by their own prudence. Uh, and they sewed together themselves fig leaves. Uh, and they made themselves, they made them their own uh, hagua. They didn't want to put on the girdle or the breastplate of righteousness and seek. And the girdling of Torah and truth, what Yah had spoke, they had given up that girdle. They had given up that substance that holds them together, hold them in the place that Yah commands them to walk in. 
And so when they did that, they sold to themselves the uh, chagua uh, and made themselves those aprons. In verse 8, and then they heard, they heard the voice of Yah, his skull, the voice that spoke like a fire, that go, got the voice that, that calls the trees of Lebanon, as our Zarkane taught us, uh, that even the calls the great, mighty, powerful structures to tremble. They heard the voice of Yah walking in the garden, in the Ruach, in the life of that Yom that day. And this is what we do. He says, an Adum and Hava, they, Hava, they hid themselves. They drew together on the one auspice their lies and their corruption, like we do. We draw together with those that will lie like us and speak evil against the nation. And that's what they did. They drew themselves into the secret conclave. And what happened, the words Hanga means not only did they find the secretive place to congregate, but the most profound thing that came out of that is this. If you get nothing today, they hardened themselves against the wisdom of Yah's counsel, his presence. See, we harden ourselves when someone, I've watched it here in a small crowd like this when we had, this place was full. You say something, I've watched the countenance of the people. I've watched men, I've watched women, especially men. They're so juvenile. I've watched them harden themselves. And held the same man that would give them bread if they needed it. I watched them do it. I say, what a wicked man. And they will say, they're my friend. And they will say, they love me. You can, you, you can get sleepy. I mean, isn't that amazing? You go to the doctor, you don't get sleepy. You in Walmart, you don't get sleepy. But when the messenger of God, you got to rest your eyes. Why is that? Something is wrong in your spirit. All of a sudden, you got to rest your eyes. That's wicked. You don't need to rest your eyes. You go out with the world, you don't rest your eyes. You go out there and walk. Can I ask you a question? You're all out when you go on trips and you're all out walking sometime a couple few hours. Who rest their eyes when y'all do that? Tell me. Talk to me, nation. Who around walking and say, I'm going to rest my eyes? <laughs> but in y'all's house, we have to rest our eyes. Isn't that wicked? Yeah. Tell me, please. Tell me, please tell me. Oximion and I up on the beach. We walk all the way down to the beach, or, uh, to the pier, right there. It, we walked about three hours and they go, we, nobody rest their eyes. We got out there, we talked to the people on the pier. Let me see what you got. One old fella, he was drunk as a scum. He said, I'm going home and watch football game. I said, boy, you caught some vision. Let me see what you got, man. This casual conversation, but we didn't rest our eyes. <laughs> when it comes to y'all, we're always resting our eyes. We're always closing our eyes. And some damn follow you never rest it. You go in the store and spend 30, 40 minutes. You don't rest yourself, do you? Can go around the Torah, spoken to this through this man. Can't get around. See, this is what we need to understand Yah's directives. Let me move, because I want to finish this today. If I don't, I'll pick it up at some other time. These are the first thing. This is the first thing they did. They, they, they began to chabab. They secretly... In the secretive conclave, they harden themselves against Yah in their own resolution. Well, if he comes, I, I know that I got power. I am a God. I speak what, what's in my heart. You've never heard people say that I speak what's in my heart. Your heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And yet they will say, I will speak out of my heart. I'm just going to speak my mind. Your damn mind is fruity and it is nutty as they come. We need the mind of Yeshua and the mind of Hamashiach speaks from the judication of Torah. It exudes and uh, exemplifies the power of Torah. Our minds uh, spill filth uh, and wickedness and lies. So they tried to hide themselves. You can't hide from you. They hid themselves. 
They hid themselves in the presence of Yah among the trees in the garden. Well, I will never do that. We hide ourselves. We hide ourselves under our expression. We hide ourselves under our self-righteousness. They hide themselves from the present. We're talking about the face of Yah. That word presence is ponim. Ponim, ponim. It is from his facial presence. They hid their face from the face of Yah. And someone correct us, we hide our face. We don't want to look at them, do we? Talk to me. We want to express me. I want you all to correct me above all things. Correct me, Yah. In your judgment and not in your anger, you bring me to know. I want him to correct me. If he send no man after his own heart to feed us with knowledge and understanding, he is not the great one. You might as well make your God like Adam and Eve did. And your God is constituted by your damn belly because every God needs to be fed, doesn't it? You go to every nation, they feed their gods. They bring offerings to their God. Isaac Cain talked about Abraham and Tirah. That his gods, the gods of Tirah, how many he had. And Abraham said, I got something for you, boy. He brought that out so eloquently. And every god needs to be fed. And so this is what Hashatan said. Allow Nahash. Allow that spirit whereby you defy, Yad, you defy. He said, I know that Abraham will teach. He not just teach, he will command his house, his children. He will command his household. In the midst of all the commands, the instructions of Yah. And he shall become a mighty and a great nation. That's what he said. He said he shall command him and he shall become a great nation. Mighty nation that is strong and mighty and powerful. Because they have, shall the resolve of the midst of all the commands of Almighty Yah. When I say that, I know there are strong men out there. I'm not the strongest of men. But it delights my heart when I see strong men. I hate these little weak jelly back boys. I hate that. I don't like being around them. And they're people I would just tolerate. I don't embellish their to walk with them. Because I see their nature. And we are people we can't hear. Yeah, we can't hear a damn thing. Just like Lazarus and the rich man, he said, if we send, if someone come from the dead, they will believe. He said, you're a damn lie. If they don't believe the prophets and the messengers, even if one came from the dead, we won't believe. If somebody, if Evangelist Horn got out of that grave right there, we'll run like hell. That old nasty looking body. He came in any other form, we would not believe it. And if we can't hear, we can't be attentive to hear the messengers of Yah. You won't even hear Yah, man. You won't hear him, woman. I hate that in Yah's house. We got time to do everything. We got to pay attention to everything. We find ourselves in our little secretive place that we don't want nobody to know what we're thinking, where our minds. Is everything all right? I'm all right. Now your physical dimension has changed, baby girl. Something is wrong. Oh, no, no, I'm all right. Come on, man. I can tell something's wrong. Well, you want to know what's wrong? I, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I have made, I saw you little boy. Hallelujah. So they went into their own secretive country and they said, my wisdom is much profound. It is the spirit of the power of Nahash. This is what brings down every kingdom. This is what brings down the kingdom of Yah. Yah gives us a constitution, doesn't he? And so we began to operate in the spirit of Nahash. I got my way. How many of us think that our ways are always right? Your ways are more right. Don't answer. This one is wrong and you're right. Riyak is wrong. No one that has left here has said that they were wrong. They always say, I am wrong. I've had these jackasses that say, well, you had that many people here and they all gone. How many did your sure have? Here, 5,000 and follow him nothing but for the fish and the loaves. I've had the best of them say they were my friends. I've had them stand right here and say, I love this man so dearly. I've loved him. He's my leader. I said, I never said I was your leader. I don't want to be nobody's leader. I want us to learn how to be led by the Ruach of Yah. And if I have the Ruach, I will lead you into all truth. I don't want to be your leader. I'm not inspired with aspiration uh, 
or sparring to be a leader. I will, man. You don't understand what I'm saying. We have to understand what Yah gives to a nation. He gives it after his heart. And he gives us men that will lead us in the power of Torah. He gives us men to refine the beauty of the daughters of Sion. These old crazy men and crazy women. They're crazy. I'm not taking them in. The men are crazy and the women are nutty. That's right, little fella. Live from them. That's all right. The crazy is bed bugs. What a bed bug do? What does a bed bug do? Talk to me. They what? Talk so I can hear you, man. Okay, then. We don't do that. Nah, we don't do that. That's what a bed bug does. Then. Ooh. It's kind of biting and devouring among his nation. It comes from the power of the God. You must feed the God. Let me move quickly. I want to give us somewhat. Once they defied Yah, they became his Oyeb. Once they defied Yah, they became his enemies. Once we defy Yah, we become an enemy. Why? Because we take a hostile position. Once someone instructs us, we defy them, we take up a hostile position, don't we? You've never done that, have you? You've never taken up a hostile position. Am I the only one? Huh? You take up a hostile position. You become hostile. You don't even think reasonably and sensibly. You tell me, y'all walked in the midst of the garden today and they, and they, and they, and they, they hid themselves from Yah. When the word of Yah speaks and we hide ourselves from that, he's talking to her, he's talking to him. No, he's talking to his nation people. That's who he's talking to. Ja'ul, as he writes with great effort to teach the people of Yah what is valuable and important. He talks about those in Philippians. In Felicia, Philippians 3.18. Now he, Yah gave them an instruction, didn't we? 3.18. And they turned away from that instruction. He said, you can eat of all the trees. But of this tree of tough and evil, he said, don't eat from this. In the day that you eat from it, you shall surely die. You know what Hyde uh, what is? Uh, Zah can teach about life all the time, of the system of life. For high, high, it is the breath of that which causes us to live. It's not Yaruach. It is his thoughts that makes us live. It is our delight in him that makes us live. It is the rejoicing in the Torah that makes us live. It is the great desire and passion for Torah that makes us live. And so Shaul writes unto those that were scattered abroad. He writes unto them, he writes unto the Phil Philippians and uh, Felicia 3.18. He said, I want to tell you something. There are many that, uh, that walk wrong. So even in our wrong, we think we're walking right, don't we? He said, there are many. Zakim Benjamin reminds us, uh, and many that be that go in there right. What way? We walk wrong. We walk wrong. Yeah. How far and all them that they did wrong. And he said, there are many. He said, for many walk wrong. Of whom I've told you often. I told you they were going to do wrong. I told you they were enemies. I told you they didn't love you. He said, I've told you often. And I, now I tell you weeping. They've gone wrong. Why? He said, because they are enemies of the stake of Yahshua Hamashiach. Did he lie? He didn't lie. From the day that they defied Yah, they became enemies. That's why Yah had to put them out. That's why there are many that were in the kingdom. They're out of the kingdom. That's why they're looking in. They don't know how to get in. He had to put them out. And he put them in luck there with the, with, the, with the sword or the power of his ruach. And that's why many cannot get into the game because he got messengers. And the words are like fire. And they burn down into your wicked ways and your wicked uh, vile attitude. You don't like him. You get hostile. You get upset. You know, uh, these last three dogs of president, whether it's Barack, the Bush boys, the Reagan, they call themselves, we're going to have nation building. But there's only one that can build a nation, that's Yah. They're going to change all the nations unto a democracy. We don't see that concept in our lives. We're trying to change, change everything so people can see it our way. You don't ever go to someone so they can see it Yah's way. You always go for they can see it your way. Reak don't understand. No, man, you're wicked. You don't understand. You're a wicked woman. You don't understand. You always want to convince somebody your way. 
Again, he says, for many walk wrong. I have told you often until you weeping that they are enemies of the stake of Hamashiach. He says, who hates, whose end is shamath and annihilation and destruction. And he tells us, when Hashatan told them the day that you defy Yah, was not the appeal of what they did alluring to their belly? Was it not? Sure was. Their betem, their loins. He said, they're enemies of the stake. Why? He says, uh, he says, whose God is their belly, their seat of their mental uh, veracity of need and get. He said, whose God is their belly and whose worship is their shame. And they mind the things of the earth. They mind earthly things. They mind earthly things. That's why we can sit in your house and we mind the earthly things. You, you think that if I was up and talking every now and then I got to say, okay, now. Talk to me. It's wrong. That our minds are so weak that we mind the earth. Yeah. A little cheap watch that has no value. And we do that. I'm not going to stop. Enemies. They mind earthly things. And I mind the power of any God, Nahash, is always on the earthly thing. Tell me, Yisrael, I'm not trying to be cold to us. I care enough for you to tell you the truth. Our minds are basically on earth and things, isn't it? And that's the truth. We always mind earthly things. What about you? Well, my Ach Mikaya is there talking to him yesterday. He wrote me and said, Ray, it is cold here. I'm sick of it. Well, I know what he means. He's glad he's alive. Yeah. It's cold here yesterday out there. Out there it was cold, boy. My thighs were freezing up. They were so cold. This morning it was 22 when I got up. I don't know what it was when you got up. It was 22 when I got up. And I said, Ach Mikaya, I say, when the new year of Yah come, we're going to have a great celebration. We've never done it before, but we're going to do it this year. Colorful, everyone, pretty colorful things. Nothing bland, colorful. And I said, you know what? I said, y'all bless, bless me with the money. I said, he said, Ray, where do you get that from? I said, I make things up and I think about it. I said, I want to, I was looking yesterday for some nice little rings. I might have to have Simeon make me some. I said, I'm going to have me two grills. I said, I want to do a breakfast one morning. I said, I wouldn't want to like to have some nice, big, thick, especially doing tabernacle some thick homemade bread and toast that. I said, I'm going to have both of my grills rolling. <clears throat> I'm going to have hash browns here. I'm going to have sausages here cut up in mince. I have turkey bacon here. I said, I'm going to do eggs. What way they want me to have me a big ring of hash browns. You put cheese on that. You put eggs on that. You put turkey. You put a little cheese. You put turkey and ham and you put more cheese. Ah, talk to me, man. He said, Ray, I don't do that. I said, you know what? Take care of you when you come now. I said, you take all that have some nice fruit and some jelly and you put that on that nice piece of toast bread with fruit on it. Raphael said that. She said, that's all? I said, that's all they're going to get. You don't need nothing else with that. Huh? He said, oh, Ray, I, I said, I'll tell you what, for the first of the new year, I know he's listening. I said, I'm going to do oxtails and chicken. I said, I, I tell him how I'm going to cook. He said, oh, man. I said, you know, I got you when you come. I do the same thing when you come, my friend. No different. We go to it. I said, I found, I was looking, I've been looking for the longest to find me a nice little recipe for bread. Especially doing matzvah. The hot bread is nice, but I want bread, something soft. And I said, I found this Arabic man that makes bread. Nothing but flour, no leaven, and water. You don't need butter, nothing. So, uh, a little salt. 
So Raphael made some, and the more you cook that bread, the more you make it, it's almost like a shapati, but it's not. It is soft, and it's pliable, and it's nice, and it is sweet. I said, you can put herbs in it, you can put, uh, I like that. I like bread. I really, really like bread. And I love cake. And I love those nice stickies, as we will call them in the days. I love that. To make some of that bread, I said, you can put, I said, Mikhail, you can put some sausage in there and just pack it almost like a fajita or something. I said, ah, he said, Ray, I don't. He's listening. So I'll give you something that is much more filling than that today. How about that? He's my friend. I'm going to cook that way for him when he comes. I'm going to cook that way. Don't come here dieting. You know when you come here, don't come here dieting. All right? Hallelujah. He said, it's a nation that I minds were earthly things. He said, who worship is, uh, is shame and they mind such earthly things. That's the nature of Nahash. That's why when we come together, all of us are right. There's a way that is right in a man's own eyes. In all the ways of a man that are right in his own eyes. But the case, the end, the ultimate conclusion of it all, uh, it is death. It is smooth. It is a separation from Yah. It brings us down to the dungeons of darkness. And so we gather together. We gather together. There is the proliferation of the God mind. We can see what the God mind does. It, it abandons all Torah delight. They didn't repent. That's why Yagahan said, bring you fruit there for me for repentance. And a nation, a great nation of people in Yah, there's a constant repentance. Uh, there's a prayer power 24-7 uh, every day of the year. We have no prayer. We have no love for Yah. We're not a great nation. And so as I said, you can find one individual that loves you, Yah, but... And if we command our houses, and the command begins with you because we have to command ourselves. Yes. We can't give one stipulation for one, and we don't do it. I've had those that come in, look at the community, and I say, look, man, you're not going to be able to do this. And they think I'm cold or that, speaking of the inability. No, to do this in this hour, if you do it, it's going to take a very vibrant young man that is strong and that's really, really ready to work hard. You're not going to do this at 60, 65 years old, 75. You're not going to do it. I don't care what you think. You got to work as hard as they work or harder. You got to. You got to labor. And so there are not many men that are willing to do that. There are not many young men that are willing to do that. That's why all those that were here, I appreciate everything. And if y'all ever grant me the money, I want to do something special for them all. I will. I just don't have the money. I will. And I get old dirt. Yeah, he's not listening, but I get old dirt. He'll find them all for me. Give me the money, y'all. You'll see. Hallelujah. I appreciate all they did. I really do. Even just the ones that lied against me. Lied on me. Maybe we will lie on one another, but we won't lie on ourselves with one. Can I move a little farther? Shaul says this quite profoundly. Listen to this. Let me read this because this is the way we are. We loathe the things of Yah. But we love those earthly things. See the Ruach of the mind of Yah love the things that are heavenly. Turn quickly to be midbar. Numbers 11.4. Listen to this. This is when the people now Yah gave them the manner. He gave them the body of Yahshua and they despise it. Hasn't he given us that? We haven't despised it, have we? Yeshua had 5,000 following him. He said, uh, in order for you to be my Talmudim, to be a disciplined disciple of me, uh, he said, you must eat my flesh and drink their blood. And they began to murmur against themselves, didn't they? Yeah. They began to reason among the gods. Nahash. And they said, this is a hard thing to do. And they all turned and walked no more with him. And when he began the journey on the way of Torah beauty or the revelation of the greatness of Torah, he turned and looked at 12 and he said, will you all go also? And they say, where, 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 where will we go? Where is that to go? They all turn, not some of them, they all turn and walk no more with him. They were there for one thing for, to feed the God, to bring offerings to the God. And when you do that, Yisrael, you're going to have just like Shalomo did. 
He had all kinds of pimples and uh, growth for the gods of all of those wives. Uh, and he brought down a division among the nation. David, the kingdom of David, uh, stretched from the great river of Nile unto the great river of Euphrates. Uh, all the land of Canaan uh, was under the spits of David. Uh, he was a mighty man. And this man brought it down to desolate. His wicked son that he would not listen to, uh, to the mighty men of, his, uh, of the age of Shalomo and those that had labored in his council. Uh, he would not listen to that. Rehoboam brought the kingdom down. He brought it down. And that's what has happened. We got the Rehoboam. We don't listen to no damn body. We listen to our own damn corrupt mind. We don't listen to no damn body. We don't listen to nobody. We think we got it all right. We don't give a damn. They didn't listen to Yah. Look what he does in Bimidbar. I don't care if you don't bear with me. He says in the book of Bimidbar, Numbers 11, 4. It says, and the multitude that were among Moshe, that were among them, it says they lusted greatly. And the children of Yisrael also were again. He had this mixed multitude among the nation. And they began to lust greatly. And so the children of Yisrael began to weep. They began to cry again, saying, Who shall give us bazaar? Who shall give us flesh? Yeshua gave his flesh, didn't he? And we don't want to eat that. We eat lies, but we, don't, we eat in a hush. We eat the spirit of the serpent. We eat lies because he was the father of all lies. He was a liar from the beginning. The only way we, we can evade or destroy that spirit, uh, we must keep our minds developed in Torah. We must develop ourselves. That's why he said, Abraham will be a great nation. For he says, surely teach. He shall command uh, his sons and his daughters and his whole house. Uh, in the ways of the Torah. And Nahash says, I, I will eat what I want. I will take what I want from Torah. And I will disperse the rest uh, into outer darkness. We want correction. I mean, we, we love uh, the blessings, don't we? But we don't want the counsel. We don't want the Musa. The Musa, we don't want you to correct us. Well, I'm just as old as you. It doesn't mean a damn thing because you're older than me. You're a silly old man. Even Shirak says to the young man, he said, when you find a foolish old man, don't be afraid to say, oh man, that's not the way of Yah. Let him know you're just silly old man. Even Shirak says that. I always talk to the elderly men. All the years I've done that, even though they, I was younger than them, there's a certain attitude you have to have. There's a way you have to walk that the young men will come to you. You don't have to inquire them. They will come because they will see your beauty. They will see your strength. And not all men have that. They can tell when you're a job, two cents, two dollar, nothing of a clown. I know a real man when I see one. I like real men. I got a man fetish. I love men. I love men. There have not been that many in my whole life men I've met. So that's the way it should be. Same thing with a woman. No different. Let me read this. I'm going to close here. And I'll pick this up some other time. Be made bar 11.4 And the multitude that was among them lusted greatly. And the children of Yisrael also began to weep again say, Who shall give us bazaar to eat? Now here Almighty Yah had given them manna. Manna, what is this? What is this? That is so sweet. Sweet in my belly. He had given them manna. That wasn't enough. He's given your shoe. Well, damn it, that ain't enough. That's how we treat you. He said, I give men out to my own heart. I don't believe him. He's a man. I don't trust no man. He gave manna. And they, they still lust it. He gave them manna. What is this? He gave them the food of the Melachim. He caused the great blessings to flow on them. Something you will never get tired of. 
You can eat it all day. You can you? I can eat the Torah all day. I can sit and study for hours. I know I don't have the time. I'm not like some of those that write to me. I study for eight hours a day. Come on, man. Come on here then. I'll let you work five and you study three. Give me five hours of labor. How about that? I study all day and all night. Well, I don't do that. I don't study all day and all night. You understand? I got seeds to plant tomorrow. 3,250. 3,200. We'll get them done. I may take my time. It's going to be cold and rainy tomorrow, so I may do a little tomorrow, a little Monday. But I got wood to cut. We got to stay warm. All them squares, they're about gone. So we got to get those big Justin Reds over there. Got me some goggles I can put on and just let it just, let it just flow. I like the way she sounds. I like the way she cuts wood. She's bad to the bone. She's a mean girl. I love the way she handles. I like when she sits down and she just rocks in that wood. She just going down. I like that girl. Yeah, I do. I like it. Huh? Does she feel nice in here? Ah, look at that. That sounds like bam, 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 bam. I like that. I like that little aggressive chain on her. She's aggressive. And she just get down and she's some cutting boy. You like that? Yes, sir, I like it. She's sweet as gum, man. She gets down in them logs and she, she, she rips them. You don't mind cutting with that. I don't. I don't even get tired of cutting with it. I get tired, but I don't get tired. If I got wood that I can just keep it right there to cut, I'll rock it. That's a saw there, isn't it? So is this a cutter, too. It's powerful and sharper than any two-edged uh, sword. It cuts, yes, yeah. And if it doesn't cut you, something gets wrong. You hear me? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So here it is, Yah had given them all this greatness of his power. And this is what they said in Numbers, Bimitz Bar 11.5. They said, we remember the fish. I remember what I used to have. I remember my old days. I remember living in Chicago. I remember the fun days. We remember the fish where we did eat in Mishraim. You ate something that is poison. I was thinking this morning as I read an article in the Charlotte Observer how Congress, not, not only are they have a new breed of GMO seeds, it used to be they, this Roundup Ready, they could spray the fields, plant certain things, especially corn and soy and wheat, and it would just grow. But now they got something that's more bona fide than that because the farmers say, we like this. You can spray the field. They don't even till no more. It's called no-till drill. They don't even till. They plant that wheat or corn or whatever in the field. They spread and kill everything. That's a bad boy, isn't it? Then as the corn begins to grow, that weeds in there, they can come and spread again, kill everything with the corn. As the corn get how they can go through again, spray again and kill everything. That's a bad boy. That's something that is genetically modified. Yeah, but we say, ah, that's so bad. We won't do a damn thing on our lazy eyes to get seeds to grow some food. We won't do a damn thing. We get mad. You're not going to the garden when it's 90 degrees to pick not one damn cucumber. When you have to go get it, you get mad as hell. You want somebody to pick it for you. You know, it's just the truth. You all can, you all can. We wonder why our bodies are so dysfunctional and why they're failing us. We wonder why we can't lose a damn pound. We wonder why our bodies are so disoriented. And this is, you wonder why? But I read that, I said, yeah, please help me. I said to my HO, I don't give a damn. We don't have nothing. What we grow, that's what we're going to eat. Collard greens and kohlrabi and cabbages. Got a little piece of meat, that's enough. Cornbread. We have plenty of that. Broccoli, eat it every day. Watermelons and broccoli. You'll live. We're not going to get out there and labor in the heat of the sun. I love laboring out there. I love the work. I don't mind working. And I'm going to work till I die, old woman, because I know this is what keeps me alive. You understand? This is what keeps me alive. It may not keep you, but this is what keeps your body alive. Yeah. Keep your body circulating. Keep the, your blood vessels open. Yeah. Your blood arteries. I'm going to work till I die. Yeah. If I die down the field, damn it, bury me. Yeah. 
If you don't feel like burning, let the old body stay there and rot. What do you think it's going to feel like? I'll let you deal with that. I don't care what it feels like. I'm going to close in a minute, all right? But we remember the fish. We can remember that now, but we don't remember the Torah. Yeah. We don't remember the Shabbat. We don't remember his command. We remember the fish we did eat. Free land. And the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. And they said this, but now our nephesh, it is yabash. We don't have no moist. We have no living well that flows out of our belly. That's what manna wants. When a man delights in the Torah of Yah, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water of Yah. And his tree shall bear forth fruit. It shall not wither. When a man delights in the Torah of Yah, out of his belly shall flow the rivers of when they delight in the great works of Yah, we don't even delight in what Yah does. Because it is the power of the God Nahash. When a man delights in that there's a river that flows from the deeps and the depth of his betem. We don't even delight in that. He's, they said this, but our nephesh is dried up. It's moist. No moisture. He said, there is nothing at all. I'm sick of this damn food. I said, that's the way they said it to y'all. There's nothing at all. My, you tell me y'all prepare us a plate in the midst of our enemy. He prepares Yahshua for us. That's all you got for me, Yahshua? There's nothing at all to eat beside this manna. What is this? Did not they say that about Yahshua? Who is this man? No man can do these miracles unless Yah is with him. And they say, what in the hell is this? This all we got manna? This all we got is truth? And we don't want that? That's how they talk to Yah. And we talk to this. That's all we got is Musa, counsel, rebuke. Well, Yah loves those that he rebuked, doesn't he? When he receives us, he chasing us, doesn't he? And we don't buy that because we love the God power. We love the spirit of the God. Because we are and I is a God. Not, not I am, I is a God. You understand? I is a God. I want to read this and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. There was something. Where is that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a verse. Where is that? Yeah. Yes. We'll close with this last thing. When they ate from the tree, they hid themselves, did they not? Is there anything hidden from us? I'll read what Yahu says as he writes to Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. This is hid. When they ate from the tree, Adam, they chaba. Genesis 3 and 8. They hid themselves from the presence of Yah. They did secretly and they did their own little thing. They had their own little rendezvous, didn't they? Shaul closed with this as I will close today. He says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. He said, I want you all to understand, to see, we have this great ministry, the Bezorah, the teaching of Hamashiach. He says, we have received this of the Ruachim, of the Spirit. And he said, we, we don't faint. I don't, I'm not afraid of the faces of man, what they say, how they look at me, how they receive me. He said, and we faint not. He said, but it's one thing we have done. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. You must renounce those things. You see that the spirit of a God never renounces uh, the dishonor of the hidden things. They never denounce that. You cannot have that in a nation that brings a nation down. Yes. He said, we have renounced it. Yes. See, they didn't renounce the hidden things of their heart, did they? They hidden themselves. They habash. We have renounced the hidden things of this dishonesty, dishonest of, of our nature. He said, not walking in craftiness. You know, practicing something that is cunning. When their eyes were open, were they not subtle and crafty and cunning? That's what it says. He says, uh, nor handling the word of Yah deceitfully. We don't lie to you. We tell you the truth. 
We don't hide nothing from you. We reveal ourselves to you that you can examine us by what we teach and preach unto you. He said, but by manifestation of truth, commending, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. That what I say, I want every man's conscience to be disturbed. Everyone's conscience to be disturbed in the sight of Almighty Yah. He says, I want to tell you something. They hid themselves from Yah, did they not? H-I-D, does it spell like that in Bereshit? He says, but if I be Zorak, the teaching of truth is hid. It is hidden from them that are of God. He cast them out of the garden. And their seed came forth with death. Their seed came forth with death. Then Kaya and Kiel rose up and killed the sword Chaben. And if this teaching is hidden, it's hidden from them that are lost. Those that shall be exterminated. In whom? You see, Hashatan is the God of this world, isn't he? God's that many is and Lord's that many. He said, in whom the God of this world has blinded. Uh, he, has, uh, he has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the splendid message of Yahshua HaMashiach, who is the image of Yah, should shine to them. See, it's hidden. That's what Nahash does. The day you defy Yah, you will destroy the concept and the seed of a nation. And the day that we are not complicit in what he commands us, he gives us commands. And we must be complicit. He gives a wife command. He gives a husband commands. And he must obey. That's how you build a nation with a strong man, with strong daughters of Tizayon, that produce strong children. They teach them the laws and the Torah of Yah. Old women, they teach young women stubbornness and wickedness. And they talk about folly and damn foolishness. And hell, they don't have the example that they should. So if this message is hidden, it's because the God of this world has blinded your eyes. At least the splendor and the power of your shoes should shine through. Don't tell me what you got, woman. You got it, it will be revealed. You got light, it's going to shine. This little light of mine, your sure. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, your sure is the light of Torah. I'm going to let it shine. I know what you're waiting for the beat. Oh, the living Torah of Yah's my light. I'm going to let it shine, shine on me, yeah, shine, shine on me. Let the light of the Torah shine deep in me, oh, correct me, oh, yeah, show me the way, oh, I got you, mama. Let the light of the Torah shine deep in me, yeah, let it shine, oh, let it shine, let it shine, yeah, sure is my light. He shall shine in my poor name, oh, yeah, sure is my delight. Shine from me, yeah, oh, yeah, sure is my delight. Shine from me, shine, oh, yeah, sure, shine from me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. One day, yes, we'll all finish this. Got too much to do. Got too many fields to plow. It's getting too late in the evening. The sun is already down. We got to get in a hurry for y'all. We got to get in a hurry. The things you did yesterday, don't do them today. And what you do today, don't do it tomorrow. We got to get in a hurry. We think that what we've done is enough. But it's not enough. It's not enough. We have failed him every day. And it's not going to work. It just isn't going to work. You can think it's going to work. But it's not going to work at all. Period. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. Come on, my Sakain. We will rock you all. We hope that Yah bless you all. Come on, my friend. Uh, today in this message that Yah rebuke us all. And give us wisdom. Hallelujah. The, ha the Hasi, the mercies of Almighty Yahweh. You know, I, I think about that many times, how he renews that, his Hasid, his mercies, every morning, Yisrael. And we need that. Yahweh, he designed it for that purpose. Because he knows us as a people. He knows us inside, and he knows us outside. 
So that's why a message like this, what we hear that comes from this Rostam, he knows exactly what we need at the time that we need it, Yisrael. So it's up to us to take heed to what he speaks and what he expresses unto us, the nation of Yisrael, that we will make the proper corrections, that we may walk upright, that we will do all that he commands us to do, Yisrael. You know, I've been doing the study even since the, the message that I somewhat spoke, taught, even concerning the forgiveness, that, you know, concerning the sinner or what we call a sinner, it just simply, the expressions of Yahweh would just be the rasha or those that are criminal against Almighty Yahweh. And just as we're out with speaking, we, we run from Yah. We try to escape and we hide. Just as Cain, he said, I, he said that the judgment you have placed on me, being a vagabond, one and a man that runs and hides all the time, a criminal. He said, it's, too, it's more than I can bear. It's more than I can stand. Yet we have received the mercies of Almighty Yahweh, that he has not put us aside, Yisrael. He has poured out his ahava, his mercies upon us. Let's stand to our feet, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So I brought Yahweh for that. Hallelujah. That many times we have fallen, we have come short, yet he still lays his hands upon us, Yisrael. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we told you for another Shabbaton you have made, Abba Yahweh, that we can rest on only one thing, Abba Yahweh, and that is the assurance of your mitzvah, of your Torah, your Dabar, Abba Yahweh. We barak you, Abba Yahweh, for bringing Yisrael here safely, those that are listening by via of live stream, or on the radio station, Abba Yahweh, for keeping us, Abba Yahweh, for watching over us. And we just ask as we return to our homes, Abba Yahweh, wherever that may be, that, you, that we return safely, Abba Yahweh, and that your Melikim will be a camp around all Yisrael. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we declare on this Shabbaton, Hallelujah! 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 Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah!